guys, Lucas Salco here. Uh, today I'm showing you guys the Voiceless Voice deck with the updates from LED, Legacy of Destruction, and the new support that's added here. It's really only one card that's added into this deck's uh, archetype that makes it play a lot better. However, the deck does have a lot of synergy, fixes some of the problems the deck had about recursion. Before I do fully get into the video, I do want to give a shout out to my sponsor, First Class. Check them out in the description down below. Uh, other than that, let's get started. All right, uh, for this hand, you're going to need Low and Skull Guardian. Uh, really doesn't matter um, like which combination of the two because you can have uh, any two engine cards. So they all like loop around to being each other. It can be a barrier. It can be pre-preparation of reds. The main thing is just getting both of these in your hand. We're going to go ahead and start off the combo with Normal Summon Low. And use Low's effect, which is going to place um, the barrier from deck. If you start it off with barrier, then instead of placing the barrier, you're just going to go ahead and place the blessings of the voiceless voice here. But since we didn't start with barrier, we're going to place that. That way we can get the card in rotation and then use its effect to search for the blessings of the voiceless voice. If you get drolled here, it's actually not that big of a deal. You still end up with um, basically the full combo. Uh, but I'm just going to show the combo if it was full power. So then after we have done that, we're going to link away the low. Uh, before the ban list, we linked away the low into Link Karibo. Um, we all know what happened with that. So we're going to link away the low into Almirage because it's a monster with a thousand rust attack. Same thing as uh, was Link Karibo. It's just a cyber sky that you can go through. So main point. Then we're going to use Blessings of the Voiceless Voice and use the effect to add back low to hand. And then we can link away the Almirage into Secure Guard Knot. And you might be asking like, hey, why are, why are you doing this? Isn't this just like useless? Uh, yes, but no. Um, Blessings of the Voiceless Voice has a couple different effects. One of them is once per turn, target a Voiceless card in your grave or banished out to your hand. So that's really good for recycling like your lows that are banished from Bestials or the trap after you've used it because this can add back anything, not just monsters. So it's really good for recycling that. Uh, but the other effect is if a non-ritual monster is normal or special summoned face up, except during the damage step, ritual summon a light dragon or warrior ritual monster from your hand by tripping monsters from your hand or field whose total level equals blah blah blah. Uh, and then it cannot be destroyed by battle, right? So it has the ability to ritual summon as well. So that's why we went ahead and linked away the Almirage, is so we could get one summon which would trigger the blessings to ritual summon. So we're going to tribute the low from hand as it's a full tribute to summon the Skull Guardian, protector of the voiceless voice. And the chain link here is going to be chain link one skull guardian, chain link two low to special summon back. So we're going to special summon the low. And then here we're going to add Seravis. Alternatively, uh, you can add the uh, Odd Eyes Pendulum. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, but the reason that you're adding the Seravis ritual is you may be asking, like, hey, why are you adding this card? Like, your guys already can't be targeted because of this. That's not just so um, it has a targeting protection. What's going to happen is on our opponent's turn, let's say our opponent summons a monster to play the game because that's how the game works and they have to summon monsters. Uh, you're going to trigger Blessings of the Voiceless Voice again because this is not just on your turn. Uh, so we're going to trigger that to Ritual Summon. We're going to Ritual Summon the Seravis from hand by tributing the low, which is then going to trigger the low to Special Summon back. And then on Summon, low is going to trigger to place the Trap card from deck. So right here, we've achieved every part of the uh, voiceless cards. Uh, we have every single one of them in, in rotation right now. Uh, we have the trap as a disruption, which can be a pop two if you need it to be. And you don't have to worry about trying to conserve this card as much uh, or like, uh, like be conservative with it. Try to hold on to it because you can loop this card with blessings pretty easily every turn. Uh, so you have the trap, which can be a pop two. You have a monster negate with the skull guardian. You have the Seravis to negate a summon. You have the Seravis to negate a targeting effect. Um, and then you already your guys can't be targeted. They can't swing into anything for an attack. And randomly, Skull Guardian or the uh, Secure Gardener helps you from dying because as once per turn, if you would take battle or effect damage, you take no damage. Uh, so that definitely helps there with like them breaking the board and being able to kill you and things like that. Uh, so that's with the main combo. Another thing that you can do is instead of adding the Seravis off of the Saphira, you can actually use it to add an Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph. This is what a lot of OCG players are doing post side is they're siding out uh, one card, like one non engine card, to put in one odd eyes pendulum graph dragon. And then you can do the same thing with it when your opponent summons. You use the voiceless spell to tribute low and summon out the pendulum graph, and then use low to summon back and then place the um, trap card. And then what you can do instead of using the trap on the pop or the, the, the pop on the trap card, you can use the effect to shuffle back the ritual spell that we would have sent off Saphira. To ritual summon and this lets you get to Seravis. So this gets you to um, three different rituals which is really important here. Leaves the trap card on the field so you don't have to worry about trying to add it back with the blessing in the next turn uh, and it really just just puts more interruptions on the field directly and it doesn't even play into dark ruler super hard because if your opponent does dark ruler you then uh, you just 
wait to do your pendulum graph right you can pendulum graph tribute the skull guardian instead then you can still do that same play um with the Cerevis or whatever you're gonna do right for this combo i'm gonna show off what happens if you're playing the branded variant of this deck i think playing the branded variant is really really cool and really important to play just because it adds so much synergy and the branded fusion really solves the problem with this deck into breaking boards because i do think the deck has a little bit of a problem into breaking them uh so that's why i play branded fusion to fix it Here's the combo though, you need Branded Fusion and Low. This can also be Diviner or Barrier, or whatever you're like really wanting to do with it. Uh, and then any discard. So we're gonna Branded Fusion now to send Safura and Albaz, going into Albion the Branded Dragon, then use his effect to banish itself and Fallen of Albaz into Lubelion. This is where we're gonna use the discard. We're going to discard the Infinite Impermanence to fusion with the Albaz and the Albion that are banished, and go into Mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon. Normal summon the low, which is going to then place barrier. And we're going to use barrier to then add blessings of the voiceless voice and then use blessings to add back the Saphira that we had dumped. So in a way, we just kind of added Saphira from our deck to our hand, but we also set up a mirror jade here. Uh, really important to note right now we are on four summons. So we can't even get Nibiru yet. Uh, and our next summon will be the Skull Guardian. So we're going to activate Saphira to load up the ritual spell in graveyard and add Skull Guardian. And then we can use Saphira to ritual summon tributing the Lubelion here and this is what's going to help you play around things uh, like bestials at this point because they can't really bestial your low and then if you do have more gas say you have something like a preparations of right you could go preparation of right add Saravis, add the ritual spell and then ritual spell still tributing your low if you want to but we're going to go skull guardian to search for Saravis. Uh, that way on our opponent's turn we have the uh blessings loaded up to tribute off our low summon Saravis, low come back and place the trap card again same thing we did in the other combo, we're going to get the full layers of disruption here. This just adds on an extra mirror jade to the board. That's really what it does. And that's insane, in my opinion. This is the combo that shows you how to play around hand traps the best. Uh, technically, it doesn't use any of the new cards, but it does show you how you can order your cards a little better with the voiceless voice cards to totally play around hand traps. So in this hand, we have low and preparation of rights. We're going to start with preparation of rights to add Saravis and the ritual spell. If they do draw you here, you have something you can do. You can uh, normal the low, use low to then place the trap card, and then we can use prayers to tribute the low, special summon Saravis, and then use the trap card to shuffle back and summon Skull Guardian. So even in the instance of you getting drilled here, you still end with like three to four really strong disruptions. Not showing you what happens if you get drilled though, and I know that was hard to follow, but here's the main line that we're going for. Now we're going to normal summon low, and we're playing around hand traps here too, because if they do Valor or Imp from us, we have the Saravis in hand, so we can just negate it. Uh, here we're going to place the barrier, and then we can use barrier's effect to add Skull Guardian. And then to play around Bestials, we're going to go activate the effect of Prayers of the Voiceless Voice, tributing the Saravis to summon Skull Guardian, and then we can use Skull Guardian's effect to add here and add Saravis. And then we can Saravis by shuffling back the Preparations of Rights and the Voiceless Voice here. So this plays around basically any possible Bestial that you could have. Uh, our opponent couldn't even activate a Vistule before we had a negate, which is really important. Uh, there is a, a line where you can go that still plays around Vistules technically, by instead of adding Skull Guardian, if you add Saphira, then use Saphira to add. But that gives your opponent like a, a very small window where they could activate something like a Magnumut, banishing your Saphira. You can still combo through it, but it gives them the chance to summon their Vistule, which is not something that I like. I prefer to have a negate on the field as soon as I have a light or dark engraver. Uh, this is the combo that helps you play around hand traps entirely. Uh, besides that, I'm going to show you guys a deck list just really fast. This is a sample deck list for Voiceless in the LEDE format. Um, there's a few different interesting choices here uh, that I did want to go over. One of them being Kashtira Fenrir. I think this card is absolutely amazing and necessary in this deck. One, because it punishes your opponent when they do bestial you. Quote unquote, the best hand traps against your deck. Um, it just removes the bodies and stories so you don't ever have to worry about them. But also, when you do get hand trapped... Uh, Kashtira Fenrir is a level 7, and you can use the effect of Saphira to Ritual Summon, and Saphira doesn't require you tributing any certain type of monster, it just says you can banish to Ritual Summon by tributing monsters from your hand or field whose levels equal. So you can, like, Fenrir, add Fenrir, and then use Saphira to tribute the extra Fenrir that you added, and that lets you get free value and, and free playability through different circumstances. One other thing that I did want to go over is Ultimate Slayer in the side deck. I think this card is absolutely insane going into the next format and even the format after that with the Battles of Legends set coming out with probably uh, the new U-Bell Fusion. 
Um, but this card gives you a lot of advantage and a lot of board breaking ability with that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. If you could subscribe, it would mean the world. But thank you so much and you have a fantastic day.